At first glance, it appears that a single edge is flipped. However, this is not the case, and we need to look at it differently if we're going to derive this algorithm at all. If we look at this on a 4x4 supercube, we'll have a much better perspective of what's actually happening. These two individual edge cubes are swapped with each other, and these two 1x2 center blocks are swapped with each other. This center block is swapped with that one. If we look at this on a 5x5 five five supercube, again, these two individual edge cubes are swapped and these two 1x3 blocks now are swapped with each other. So that's what's really happening. Now we're going to look back again at the algorithm. We're going to start to break it down. If I rewrite it as so, Notice that the first portion is inverted in the last portion. Therefore, these are setup moves, the R2B2 and B2R2. And the algorithm in between is what we really need to study. So, if we omit these setup moves R2B2 and B2R2 and apply this, we'll have the following result. Now the centers are messed up, and these two individual edge cubies, they're not swapped within the same composite edge anymore. They're swapped oppositely. So those setup moves position these two wing edges and these two centers so that it is a pure algorithm. We will study how the setup moves work. Start with a clean cube, and we execute the first setup move. That places this 1 by 2 center block down in the position where whatever center block is here will be swapped with that one. So therefore, black will swap with black. At the same time, R2 also moved this red and black edge down here. To finish off with B2, now it is directly opposite. This matches the algorithm. That is why on the 4x4 supercube, we can see that these two center blocks are swapped with each other. Because the setup moves position this center, which was not originally involved, to be involved, to swap with this one. So that is why these two are swapped with each other. So therefore, since we know what these setup moves do, we can omit them now. And have this portion of the algorithm to derive. But where do we begin? We can first try to dissect the 4x4 cube, viewing the pieces a little bit differently than we may have in the past. Taking a 4x4 and slicing it horizontally into four pieces, if we project the corners onto the inner layer edges, there's a direct correspondence. Similarly, if we project the outer composite edges onto the centers, there's a direct correspondence. So how do we swap two pieces of the same piece group? As in, we want to swap two inner layer edges. It is these edges for which we swap two of them to have a quote-unquote edge flip. So, focus on the corners on a 3x3. Three but why study 3x3 three three corners, Chris? Weren't you paying attention, Bob? The diagram he showed portray the direct correspondence between the inner layer edges and the outside 3x3 three three corners. I still don't get it. Just watch, Bob. You will understand eventually. That's right. We can start by doing a three-corner cycle. From there, all we need to do is a quarter turn and we rotate this cube around. We now have two corners swapped. But there is a problem. There are a lot of edge pieces on this 3x3 three three which are out of place. As a matter of fact, all four are out of place. As you see, we have a problem. 
There were too many edges out of place to swap two corners. So we need to ask ourselves now is how do we swap only two pieces of the same piece group while not affecting more pieces than necessary? Although it may not be obvious on how to make this from scratch, this is a similar result to what we need to do. All we need to do from this point is do a quarter turn and then we have two corners swapped and only two edges. In this example, we swapped three blocks of equal size. This block, this block, and this block. And then we applied a quarter turn, which resulted in swapping only two corners. For the four by four, we can carry out the same idea by swapping three blocks of equal size to account for three fourths of a four by four slice. As you can see on this image, on the 4x4 four four, as opposed to the 3x3, three three, it won't be 1x2 blocks we're swapping. We'll be swapping three 1x3 three blocks because three 1x3 three blocks is 3 fourths of a 4x4 four four slice. I am lost. This is getting complicated. Yeah, you might need to pause the video once in a while. Not necessary. I am a woman genius. I understand every word, but not while you are talking. Please listen. Hey Bob, I hope she isn't serious. Couldn't be more so. Hello oh boy. And as you can see it's on the inside because we're going to be doing an algorithm for the inside because we need to swap two adjacent edges. But how do we do this? Although it might not be initially obvious, Three 1 by 3 blocks can be swapped on the 4 by 4 pretty easily. In this 4 by 4 cube, I clearly present which 1 by 3 blocks will be swapped. Each block has its slot empty, so you can see clearly which ones they are. This one, that one, and the one down here. Is it just me, or is he changing his voice tone? Yes, he is. Articulation is the key to being an effective teacher. The first start out, how about we do a slice turn? Because we are swapping one by three blocks on the inner layer slices of a cube. The first move we'll do is a slice L. Our objective now is to take this 1 by 3 block and bring it here. We will move this 1 by 3 block up here, take this one and swap it with it, and bring this one down and then put it back. So now we'll actually see this work. We'll move this up. And we'll move this into the position where that one was, and we'll bring this down. And because we got a 1 by 3 block originally from the back, we're going to return it there. And now you can see that we only have two moves to restore the cube. 